Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm joined by my good friends Lonnie and Justin this morning. How are you guys doing today? What's up? Doing yeah. good, man. Yeah, guys. Uh, Lonnie's channel is Garage Flips. Justin's channel is RVA Flips. Um, I kind of dropped the ball on it, though. I didn't put links to their channels in the description, so I'll have to do that after the fact. That's the only reason I'm here, man, for the shout out and that uh, right. link, dude. You know, hey, hi to some people in the chat. Mr. Sadie's here. I got this by Don, reseller man, Pittsburgh, Gate City Picker. Kim does reselling. Marie Paralette, I probably mispronounced that. Frank Petta, Joni Kramer, Glock 30 fan. Good morning, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. What are you doing? Tearing up paper? Yeah. Do, uh, Swamp Picker gave me a bunch of paper a while back. Oh, that's cool. And uh, yeah, like a big box full. So I'll, I'll use the pack every now and then. Good old Swamp. Yeah. That's my buddy. And, oh, and competitor. It's my buddy and my nemesis. Both, both somehow. I don't know. Yeah, you guys don't pick all the same stuff, though. No, nah, he's been busy lately, though, with the business, the family uh, bike business. So, yeah. That's kind of been helping. And so today's topic, um, we're talking about counterfeit products. I actually found an article that I want to share. I'm going to go ahead and watch the screen. I mean, Can I say good morning to Zahir Malik? Yeah, absolutely. He says that's afternoon. Man. That's afternoon there. That's, that's my man there. I, I love Zahir, dude. He's a cool guy. Z Zahir, Zahir has that, that wit and that just sense of humor. But I just I, I I get it. I love it. Yeah. Always have. And he's got that brand new baller reseller office going on. Yeah, he just got that. Yeah, I love it, dude. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, there it is. All right. So this is a uh memorandum that Trump signed. And he is basically calling out Amazon, eBay, and Alibaba uh, for allowing counterfeit products to be sold. I'm not going to read this whole thing. There's just a couple things I, I want to point out here. So um, let's see here. Luxury brands lose about 30 billion mil dollars of income a year to fake goods sold online. My fuels industry has been linked to terrorism, among other criminal activities. Counterfeit plague just about every corner of the web. According to one study done last year by the Government Accountability Office, Sample of commonly counterfeited products bought on Amazon, Sears, Walmart, eBay, and Newegg, 40% were fake. Um, last week, Donald Trump signed a memorandum aimed at counterfeit, specifically according to the White House National Trade Council, against sites like Amazon, Alibaba, and eBay. Trump asked the Department of Homeland Security and Commerce Department, among other federal groups, for spending the next few months drafting a plan to combat counterfeits. Trump wants to hold these marketplaces accountable by gathering data on their supply chain and tracking down the sellers and warehouses that distribute these goods. This is a warning shot across the bow. It is your job to police these matters. If you don't clean it up, the government will. Um, so this, this is interesting. The real real, I guess, is having a lot of counterfeits too, and they're being sued by Chanel. I didn't know about that. Uh, let's see here. There's a couple more things I want to point out okay this i thought was really interesting companies like amazon ebay and alibaba have taken some action to fight counterfeits two months ago amazon launched project zero which will allow brands to flag and delete fake listings so this sounds like I, all right on the surface it sounds good but it also sounds like a slippery slope yeah my that was that was my thoughts exactly um, I can definitely see pros and cons to it because if if they're if the companies get all the power to take down whatever listing they want, then they're going to do that because they don't want competition. But yeah. you know, the I mean, less product out there, the better. The, the way I feel like you stop it is well. Here's the problem: is that China does not have the same like companies their copyright protection does not extend uh from my understanding and i could be talking out my ass here so but uh, from my understanding is like copyright protection that companies have don't necessarily extend to try or they just don't give a sh they don't care you know um mm -hmm. 
And so the way I feel like to stem it is, I mean, they would like, I feel like just stop letting, like make China sell to China. You know what I mean? Like we have eBay UK, we have eBay, we have all these sites. Why is China able to like pump crap onto all the, I don't know. It, I just feel like okay. stop China. <laughs> oh, oh, well, okay. Here, here's, here's one thing that I'll say. Okay. I mean, there's a bunch of different angles you could take and Hey, is that the caramel man? Yeah. Caramel. I love it. Yeah. Man. It's so freaking good. So, you, you know, one thing that makes it difficult for, for resellers, especially of used luxury goods is there's not enough education out there about how to identify fakes. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. Like, I feel like a lot of these manufacturers could make, make it a little easier by putting like, you know, like you take, say, you take, say, a currency, like U.S. currency. They do things to currency to make it very easy to tell if it's real or not. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. like type a pen across it, right? You know, on the counterfeit pens. Or they have yeah. the strips and they have other things yeah. like that. I think if they, like luxury brands built in things like that, safeguards that consumers and sellers could look for that are extremely hard to fake, I think that would go a long ways to helping out. All right, so I'm asking the chat what this was. I'm just holding it up for yeah. Like if they're serious about it, like a lot of times they won't even discuss like the makers of these products. They won't even discuss the things that they look for because they don't want to make it easier for counterfeiters to counterfeit. Oh, yeah. we need to, to work on that. But on the other hand, it also a lack of knowledge also makes it hard for sellers and buyers to know if it's counterfeit too. So I don't know. There's got to be some answers there. Flip flops all day says the Chinese have schools that teach you how to steal and counterfeit items. That's wild. Yeah, I mean, luckily, like you know, I do a lot of clothing, and you know, I don't, I don't mess with handbags uh, just because that I don't know that stuff that well. But in doing clothing, I've had, you know, I've kind of learned from my failures in sourcing. And like over time, as you get more familiar with an item, there's a lot of counterfeits in clothing, especially some of the higher end stuff. You kind of learn some of the telltale signs to look for. Um, but even still, like, you know, like a lot of times, like for, for like, for instance, let's say like jeans, like high end jeans, like, you know, you can check even stuff like the back of the rivets and, the, you know, the jeans and see if they're, they're, they're marked correctly. Or a lot of times they'll like cheap out on some of the, like the smaller details that you might not otherwise look for. But I mean, even still, like, it, you know, if someone gets really good at counterfeiting, like, who's to say they can't just mimic that? I don't know. It, it's hard. Look, look at uh, look at J Dub killing kicks. There's so many LV, uh, Louis Vuitton, and Gucci bags in the bins. I don't even look at those bags. Yeah, whenever I see Louis Vuitton, like at yard sales, I don't look at those. Yeah, like, I don't even buy purses hardly because I mean. Around here, just about any expensive brand purse I see, there's probably at least a 75% chance it's a fake. I would say, at least. I found That's a lot of times that people are pretty honest. when I Because I don't know that much about purses. So, like, I'll pick it up and look at it, and people are like, oh, that's a knockoff, or, you know, that's a real one or whatever. And they've always been, for the most part, pretty honest about it. Yeah, I don't. I, the thing is, dude, like, I've been burned a few times on that stuff. You know, I don't know. That's, that's a hard sunglasses well, are a tough market, too. Yeah. 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 Well, like, you bought, didn't you, at an estate sale, Lonnie, you ended up with a pair of jeans. You paid like 10 bucks for them because they were like a $150 pair of jeans. And you end up having to cut them up, right? The ones with like the, the yeah. bomb woman on them or whatever. Yeah, it had like the, uh, it had like the tied up lady on, on the, uh, or lady right. on the but like if those had been real, those would have been like crazy money. Right. Yeah. But that was my greed. Right. That was, that's, an, that played into my greed. I'm like, Ooh, I can make a lot of money on these. I knew when I picked them up, there's a, there was a, a chance they were fake for sure. I kind of knew that. Yeah. You know? So I wasn't shocked when they were, when I found out they were fake. I picked up a watch. Um, it's been over a year now. I cannot remember the brand, but the model was selling. It had the brand, it had the model, and it was something like two or three thousand dollars used. And it, I did like a couple of bucks for it. It just looked a little off. I couldn't find the same one. 
Well, I spent like two to three hours just scouring the web when I finally found it. As here says, we have an issue at car boots where often someone will turn up in a small car with boxes of new Nike trainers for 20 pounds each when they would be 100 pounds. They were legit. That's the way, that's the way the flea market is here in Virginia. That's why, like, a lot of people are like, oh, do you source flea markets? I'm like, no, dude. It's mainly like counterfeit vendors. Like, you know, you go to get your Louis Vuitton for 40 bucks, you know? Like, right. it's a. Uh, yeah, I just I haven't really had great experience with the flea market scene here in Virginia. Tennessee Picker says he used to sell Jordans years ago, but not anymore. And I agree with that. Most people that have Louis Vuitton stuff, everybody knows Louis Vuitton, right? So it's kind of, I think I feel like it's kind of hard to get to steal Louis Vuitton. Yeah. And, and market. I would also say, like, okay, if you're at a yard sale, for instance, right, and you pull up and it's like kind of a lower, low, like, you know, not a real great house, get out and you find a Louis Vuitton bag and they're selling it for 10 bucks or five bucks or whatever, that's fake. I, I, okay, so it's different. Like, if you're yard selling in a, in a multi million dollar neighborhood and they might have right. a bag for 25, 30 bucks, maybe they just want to get rid of it. They don't want to mess mm -hmm. with selling it online. Like, but you also, you kind of need to, when you're, especially with the yard sales, like look at who the house that you're buying from and ask yourself, does it make sense for them to own this authentic item? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. That's a great if, point. If, yep. If you find, if you, if you like pick up a pile of faded glory jeans and there's a Louis Vuitton bag underneath them, right. that ain't real. Yeah. That ain't real. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you one thing that is not fake. Sporting goods. What do you What do you mean, like bats and gloves and? Yeah, there's um some of the golf clubs like they they make them in China and like the coloring's off a little bit, but for the most part, like I'd say, ninety nine percent of the sporting goods you see out there will not be there's there's just no fakes that are made of them. Michael Burnett says counterfeit sports memorabilia is a big one too. If it doesn't oh, have a man. Here. and I don't know why, but the state of Florida for some reason is like a hotbed for that stuff. There's these like big auction places, and I know this because a couple of them called me uh, with my auction website and they want to send you the memorabilia. So, like, we've got all this autographed jerseys, you know, walls and stuff, and we'll send it to you and you can sign it or whatever consignment price you want to do or percentage and it's all fake you ever saw that that 30 for 30 which one the one about the counterfeiters um it was a big ring like back in the 90s yeah and we're talking thousands and thousands and thousands like warehouses full of product holy cow it was all yeah, fake signatures yeah this guy uh got real good at faking any signature you wanted basically you know so mm. if a base if like if a hall of fame baseball player would die all of a sudden he'd be out over there cranking out baseballs you know and they had all these methods to like age the balls and oh yeah they do that with antiques too like that player stuff will bury it in the ground just to like age it um brian fiddler says john don't be sending me knock off ikea bags <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending those out today, by the way, Brian. I've got them set aside. I'm going to mail them out to you. Brian, oh, if, I got if you don't have IKEA bags, Brian, it's going to be freaking game changing. Those things, man, that's the most spiritual experience I've ever experienced. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, seriously, dude, it was game changing for me. Like, those IKEA bags, like, I, I, like I'm going to start a religion, I think. That's funny, man. John, also, uh, I have um, Eric's information. Oh, good deal. He got in touch with me, so I have his. Uh, after the show, we'll um, we'll get together and get those lights sent out to Eric too. Perfect. So. Yeah, we'll get all that taken care of. Everybody that uh, played in the tournament bracket, we appreciate it. And Justin, you know, second. Everything can. Let's see. Zahir is talking about a faked Toy Story Monopoly game. 
saw there was no Hasbro or anything on the box. Opened it up, saw the cheapest nasty excuse. I've never heard. I've never heard of a fake board game before. That's crazy. That, that is nuts. They would have got me too. I've never seen a fake. Well, I've never, I've never seen a fake board game that I knew of. Anyways, like I might have sold some before. <laughs> well, I um, what it is, all those pallets of DVDs and games and everything. Oh my gosh, I found so many fake DVDs, and they weren't like the obvious ones. Like the coloring was just off a little bit. So I knew something was kind of wrong with them, so I like would set them aside. And the telltale sign, whenever I was like not sure, is like you could scan the barcode, and if it didn't come up that product, then you knew. Doesn't it seem like they, if they go through all the trouble of making a fake, is it really that hard to fake a barcode? I think there's a reason why they don't do it. Maybe like that's what can get them in trouble. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you know what? That's probably right because if you look at like the uh, fake Pokemon games, th those are the worst. I think on eBay. If you go look oh, at like yeah. yeah the old Pokemon Game Boy games, it's like mostly fake on eBay. I don't know why they don't do something about it, but usually what they leave off is that little, just a little printed seal. Nintendo. It's a you know it's a little small seal that says Nintendo on the on the label. Mm-hmm. And they leave that off usually. Hmm. And I'm thinking that maybe that's the one that they like, like you say, maybe that's the one that will like send them to prison for life or something. I don't know what the right. deal is. They can print that just as easy as they could anything else. I'll tell you, if they crack down on the counterfeit video games, the the market of the authentic ones would go way, way up. The prices yeah. would go up big time. Yeah, because we have to make sure to write. Like in our titles, it's so bad. If you sell Pokemon, you've got a legit one. Yep. You've got to put genuine, OEM, well, all this stuff. Yeah, and you also have to, know, you have to know what to look for because, like, some of those, man, like, uh, especially the Game Boy Advance games, like, you can tell a lot of times they're fake by the crappy, like, uh, battery. Like, they'll have, like, a little, like, plastic, like, gear in there that, that helps with the battery or whatever. And you'll see that, and the casing will be, like, way too translucent than the original games were. That's a good sign, too. Those games weren't, like, super translucent. A lot of the fake ones, they have, like, these really cheap, flimsy, translucent cases. Harry Tornado says replicas aren't illegal to sell. Fakes are illegal. Well, I mean, it would have to be a replica that was licensed by the original company. Right. right. Is that what you're talking about, Harry Tornado? Like, officially licensed replica? Vehicle registration renewal. Thrift Mine is saying, don't companies have to buy UPC numbers? That's a good I question. I don't know. I don't know either. And look in the bottom of the cartridge on the Game Boy game and see if it says Nintendo on the board. Right. Yeah. You open up the game. Yeah. I'm definitely not a video game expert. I've watched some videos of the stuff. Um, like, I really like Gaming Historian. He's got a good channel. Um, there's some other guys that do it. Oh, Gaming Historian is fantastic, man. I, I love, love that guy, yeah. Experience. Norm, I think his name is. Yeah, the, yep. he, I just, I mean, I know it takes him a long time to put out those videos, but man, I wish he could put out more frequently. I really do. Yeah. I've learned a lot from watching his stuff. But uh, yes, they say that some of those knockoffs are so good. The only way to tell is if you crack open the case and look at the board. Look, hello, thrifty uh, Amy. Rookie mistake a few years ago. Bought a whole case of Dre Beats from a reputable local auction. We did with some convincing get to return them for a refund. Yeah, those are the... I would never buy Dr uh, Beats by Dre. No, never. No. Nope. Matter of fact, about five years ago, I actually had a pair that I bought cheap. I thought they were real. And I went to sell them on eBay. And they got pulled down immediately. Yeah. And then I did some research, and the color combination that I had, it never existed. Oh, <laughs> jeez. So, I wow. mean, it was absolutely – and they sounded great. You know, oh. I didn't know. I had no clue, no clue whatsoever. Like, even the bot, the packaging and everything looked to the un to my untrained eye. It looked legit. Yeah, um – when I was at the warehouse, people bringing in different things, you know, knockoff or whatever it is, I wouldn't sell it. 
Like if if I wasn't a hundred percent confident that it was genuine, we just didn't sell it. Like I remember a guy had a Rolex and yeah, right. For this to knock off, I'm like, I'm not selling it, dude. I'm not selling fake stuff. With the signatures too, like I've seen a lot of signatures and a lot of different things. I'm like, I can most of the time I can pick out, you know, a fake, but not always. There's some signatures, right? Like that you look at and it's like personalized, and it's like some dude that played a bit part on the love boat back in the right, 70s right. Or something. And, you're, and you're like nobody would fake this guy's yeah, signature nobody would fake it. <laughs> uh, but yeah how many how many times have you seen a rolex posted in uh one of these big face reseller facebook groups yeah is this real it's never real yeah. <laughs> i see a lot of louis vuitton posted in the those groups too it's almost never real either. Yeah, and I the, I don't know how to tell the difference. I mean, I, I mean, I pretty much just steer clear. No, and they'll say the experts will say, "Oh yeah, look at the stitching." I'm looking at. I'm like, "What the hell are you talking about?" I need to tell the difference. <laughs> yeah. they know what they're looking at for sure. Yeah. Oh no, I'm not. I'm speaking to my ignorance, not not yeah. their. Uh, I don't know what a good stitch versus a bad stitch looks like. No clue. Well, I look, guys. I like. So I, I always feel bad because I never look like I'm working on these shows, but I've already been to the post office. My packaging is done, and I did just pay my water bill and my vehicle registration renewal. So I am doing stuff. J Justin, you don't I have to. You don't have to explain. I just don't want to look like a guy sitting here twiddling my thumbs. You know what I mean? You can. You can. <laughs> you, you can. You can sit there and twiddle your thumbs. Yeah. You can. Because I'm the boss. You're the boss of that I'm room. The boss. You're the boss of that clean room. Yeah, man, this room is freaking nice now, dude. I love it now. It, it, I feel I feel so much more productive. Like it's amazing what just doing some freaking hard work will do for your mentality. Let's see a uh, let's let's get a quick tour of the yeah, cleaned me, up room. Yeah, let me switch the uh, the camera. Hold on a second. I have it on. I'm the walking on you, Justin. All right, hold on one second. Let me pull up the hangout. Uh, so much pressure. <laughs> Here we go. Whoa, whoa. Wait, can, let me read this by Candace. Oh, uniquely me. Um, Tracy says, Justin, you owe us nothing. <laughs> Candace, right, Hicks, Candace Hicks is saying, I'll be interested to see what happens with Disney items when Mickey Mouse becomes public domain in 2024. Is that for real? I'm, they sure, can't. I'm sure they'll renew. I mean, can they renew it? I don't know. No, it's what happened to the Beatles music a couple years ago. Oh, that's why I finally ended up on iTunes. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. Beatles music is not public domain, is it? Uh, 50 about? years. I think they give you 50 years um, for your copyright. You can't, like, resell it, I don't think, but you can own it. You know what I'm trying to say? So, wait, 50 years after they die, right? No, 50 years after it's made. I thought it was after the death of the... Yeah, we need to. Well, no, Paul McCartney's still alive. I know. That's why I'm I, saying I'm, it. I'm halfway talking out of my butt. All right. I, I think I, you I, are. I, I no, don't think that... I know that it happened. It happened recently. Like it, I remember something happened with the Beatles music that became yeah, public because domain. Michael Michael no, not public domain though. Michael Michael Jackson owned that music. I thought. I don't if anybody know, that knows what they're talking about, because we obviously don't, we would love some clarification. I'm I'm like a hundred percent. It's not public domain, or maybe the lyrics could be. I guess, but I don't know. I think I thought that music was worth like a billion dollars or something like that. Okay, Glock Thirty fan says you can't own it. You can use it in a non-profit generating way, say as background music. But like for instance, you we couldn't put it in a vlog though, because since that is technically it's monetized, yeah. right? Yeah. If it was public domain, you could put it in a vlog. You know? You can own but not sell sound like copyrights to me. Sounds like copyright to me. Yeah, you can own but not sell sounds like copyright to me. That Yeah, Sadie, it's still copyrighted. But I think the difference is you don't have to pay for the music. So, like, you can just get it instead of having to, like, buy an album or something. I don't know. I don't know. Uh... Candace Hicks says copyright lasts 70 years after death of creator. That's what I thought. 
I'm looking at an article on this now and using the Mickey Mouse thing as an example. So it's saying, so the image of Mickey Mouse will be public domain, but that doesn't mean that you can like create merchandise. Uh, right. for profit. So like, so like, yes, it's public domain in the sense that if you're going to put, okay, let's say you're making a yard sale sign. Technically, no one's going to bust you for it, but technically if you take a character from, let's say Game of Thrones, right? It's the HBO show and you put it on your, because I see this before, and you put that on your yard sale sign, you're actually infringing someone's copyright. Where, no, dude, dude, I think y'all, y'all are both a little confused about what public domain is. Can we get a definition of pub, public domain? You can do anything you want to with. I'm looking at that now. Public domain is truly like a fair game. As far as I know, like you can do anything with it, including sell it or whatever. Profit from public domain. Checking that. Is it illegal to make money on public domain content? Here we go. Uh, the term public domain refers to creative materials that are not protected by intellectual property laws, such as copyright, trademark, or patent laws. The public owns these works, not an individual author or artist. Anyone can use a public domain work without obtaining permission, but no one can ever own it. There is a very cool uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, this is blah, blah. It's just this is long. I don't feel like reading all this shit. <laughs> Come on, let's uh, get a let's get a, a YouTube law degree right here. Let's go. <laughs> Gary Strange says, "Good morning. Did you guys see that movie coming out about the Beatles? As if they never existed, except to one person who becomes a superstar by putting out their songs as his own. Yeah, it's called Yesterday. It looks really uh, good. Have you seen, watched the trailer for it? It looks awesome. It's coming out in the theaters. Yeah. Hmm." I think it's like summer, maybe. Um, okay, so we were talking about counterfeit sports memorabilia. If you guys ever get autographed memorabilia or any kind of like uh, sports things that you think might be uh, fake, post it in the Facebook group for This Week in Reselling. I'll put a link in the description of this video, and I will do my best to help you out if it's legit. I've got a baseball, John, that you told me about before. Actually, two of them. I've got two baseballs here. I need y'all. Can you authenticate these right now for me? Right on the spot. I forgot who this even was. I sold the other ones, but I have these. Let me lock this on you here. If you need me to, I could take oh, it yeah. out. Oh, yeah. It's um, Jose Oliva, I think. Okay. How do you spell that? Let me write it down. I'm pretty sure. Jose Oliva? Yeah, O L I V A. Okay, and all right. Did I get an authentication on that? So, did that look real to you? Um, hold on a second. You put me on the spot here. A lot of times, what I do is like I'll I'll match up pictures to like complete listings or you know PSA DNA authenticated. I think it looks. You, I think it looks you, pretty darn. Good. Hmm. I don't know. Post a, send me a picture of it. I'll look at it a little closer later. I guess, you know what? I guess I'll post it in the Facebook group, just like you said. Right. <laughs> All right, here's the other one. I know I figured that one out, and I sent it to you, but now I can't remember I, who it is. I, I can't either. I had the names and everything, and I texted them to you, and you didn't write it down. Um, I don't know, yeah. man. Send it to me again. I'll figure it out. Ugh. Tennessee Picker says he bought an original autographed Xbox a couple of years ago. I used an online forensic specialist to authenticate it for around $50. Oh. So 650 Who autographed it, Kevin? Bill Gates. <laughs> That'd be fun. That's what I was thinking. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Master Chief. Master Chief autographed it. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, once you authenticate for me, can I get you to um, Facebook message me a COA? No, no, no. I'm not giving you any of that. Yeah, you can... I'll, I'll pay you like a dollar for it or something. Then I could, <laughs> then I could say sign baseball with COA. That's terrible. 
Static X. Who is that? Is that a band or something? He, yeah. I think he died of like a heroin overdose like a while oh, ago or something. Okay. Yeah, speaking of COAs, there like when it comes to sports memorabilia, there's only like two, maybe three companies that COAs are actually worth a shit. There's this like is, uh, what's that? No, no, I'm, uh Tracy wanted to see my shirt. Is it? It's a repop. I bought it on eBay. It's, it's I like that shirt. It's not old. Why can't we see Justin? Looks Oh, looks like I, I, I did show you all the room. It's just they started talking about a public domain. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry, dude. We we get fired up about public domain around here. <laughs> but if you look at the screen, just lock it on me real fast. I mean, that's basically it. I had the camera focused on it. Yeah, it's Glock Thirty it. fan says COAs are only worth the rep of who gave them. Sorry, John. I doubt you have street cred for that. He's exactly right. That's why I'm not going to give out any COAs. Yeah, but if you did, then I could say with COA. No, that's but. That wouldn't make a difference because the people who know sports stuff, if the COA isn't PSA DNA or like JSA, then it really doesn't mean anything. Well, I'm I'm gonna sell to somebody that doesn't know it that well though. That's the that's the goal there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find somebody stupid to sell to. <laughs> also, kind of real, real fast, I just want to say everyone that's like, oh, show us the room, show us the room. I know who don't watch my videos now. <laughs> video came out last night, guys. Come on now. Y'all tripping. <laughs> did did you show the room yet? Yeah, well, it's on the screen now. I mean Okay. Well walk around. Let's see. Well, I gotta hold on. I'm sorry, Justin. We we're scatterbrained today. That public domain gets us fired up though, I'm telling you. Yeah. There. It's just I got rid of the futon, put a thing up. But if y'all want to see great detail, I put out a video last night about it. <laughs> hey, how does that how does that feel being able to just like walk around? Uh it feels good. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of an embarrassing thing to have to be like, oh yeah, it's great to be able to walk around in the room I work in. <laughs> Tracy says I have to allow for 24 hours. How can I give y'all 24 hours when I release it? Like in less than 24 hours typically. <laughs> yeah. Justin, how many pieces of clothing is in your death pile, would you say? Uh, probably about eight hundred or eight hundred. Oh my god, dude, that's crazy! And it's all like I like I went through like a lot of this stuff hanging up here. I haven't even started looking looking through the closet because that's kind of out of sight, out of mind. But a lot of the stuff in the closet, stuff that's probably just gonna get redonated. But I mean, I was going through that kind of like really like with a you know a critical mind, say okay, what can I get rid of? Everything that I have up there should sell for like twenty five dollars and up, sh include not including shipping. So. It's kind of hard to like just throw that in a donate pile, you know. Hmm. Technically, it's a steamboat. Sorry, guys, I got public breaking public domain news here. Uh, technically, it's a steamboat <laughs> Willie Mickey Mouse that will be public domain. That was before Mickey wore white gloves. That mouse will be everywhere. As soon as the day he becomes public domain, you're going to see that little mouse everywhere. I might make it my channel icon. Tracy says, oh my, OMG, Justin, stop buying, please. I'm not, I'm not buying clothes anymore. Um, I'm not going to stop garage sailing, though. Hell no. That would be that would be shooting myself in the foot. I mean, you'll see. Tighten up. You'll, yeah, yeah, exactly. You'll see in the video today something I picked out at garage sales two weeks ago for 25 cents. I sold for like 36 bucks plus shipping uh, yesterday. So um, look at there I go, plugging my own video again. So, Justin, um, you, you you vape this stuff, right? What stuff? In, in in the room? Is that do your clothes smell like that? What watch yeah. watch he's gonna get triggered here. No, I don't get triggered. No, <laughs> vape, vape uh like this right here, it will have like a light. Like if you were in the room right now with me, you would maybe smell like a, a faint hint of like pineapple, but it's no different than if I was burning a scented candle. Actually, that would that would leave more of a smell than the vape. So you are mm -hmm. so your clothes are infested with the smell. Are or aren't? I, I couldn't catch you. They, they are. They are not. How do you know? It's oil, right? Uh, it's oil when it goes in. When it comes out, yeah. Okay, it's oil. You 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 breathe it in, and then you release it out. It's vapor, right? Vapor is what? Vapor is liquid in a gaseous state, correct? And then it, it flows around the room and then it like 
something happens with the pressure or what I don't know, the temperature or whatever, and it ends up like not becoming vapor anymore and it becomes liquid and it's it lands on your clothing. I mean, I can tell you nothing in the room smells like it, but I mean, I know you're just trying to like get me uh triggered or whatever, but <laughs> I mean all right, all right, here you go. Here's a good example. Lonnie, I sent you a shirt. Go smell the shirt that I sent you. See if it I actually good. wore it. Dude, I wore it the other day. I like that shirt, man. It's nice. Good. Quicker says the inventory in my office probably smells like Taco Bell. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Look, man, now that now that I look, you're not gonna get me all fired up anymore now that I'm in a nice organized space. Like, you know. Did, did you watch? Yeah. Brian says Lonnie trying hard here. Yeah, I was stretching there. <laughs> um, did you watch this shirt before you sent it to me? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Good, because I didn't wash it before I wore it. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I wash like 99% of my thrifted stuff, unless it's something that needs like dry cleaning. And then if it's worth it, I'll dry clean it or I'll just steam it or something, you know? That's a nice shirt, dude. I only wore it for a couple of hours. I had to go somewhere, so I didn't want to wear a T-shirt, so I threw this on. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as I saw it, I was like, let me at least message him if he wants it. It's comfy, man. I like it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thrift Mind says, my office smells like Big Macs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's true, man. Like, when you get, like, McDonald's or something, and it and it's in your car, and then, like, you get home, and then the next day, whenever you open your car up, it still smells like it, even though the food wasn't in there. For a yeah. Long time. I worked at McDonald's when I was 15, and I just reeked of it whenever I got off work. Adita oh, said, you say that with a lot of condensation, Lonnie. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> we were talking about, get it? You get it, Justin? Condensation? Yeah. Uh, ha, 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 I get no, it. No, but it was, it's like the double on, double on top. Yeah, I get it because of condensation, and then also, yeah, the, yeah I get it. Yeah. Uh, it was clever. I'll give it. I'll give it credence. Well played. Well played, Dita. That was good. <laughs> mm. LD is an LSU fan. Hey, uh, you're getting your your washer is broken right now, right, Justin? It is. I was gonna I talk about that a little bit in the video today. Oh, I don't. Sorry, I didn't want to spoil it. <laughs> dude i promise you like i, I I'm might, you, that's if, you know you know it's bad when i think that's the most riveting content in my video today <laughs> there might be three people in this audience that are going to see that video so we could talk about it, it, ain't gonna hurt. it ain't gonna hurt. And, and two of them are probably ryan and pam <laughs> uh, hey hey y'all hey, look for real go watch ryan and pam i i watched their video yesterday that they put out the yard sale good, one that was good one. Good stuff, man. I mean, yeah. the, just really, I like. I really like the way they present. Was yeah. that first mine? Yeah, dude, yeah. they're fun, man. I'm telling you, I think I think they have potential on YouTube. I really do. Just keep grinding, guys. Just keep grinding. I know it can get sh frustrating, but yeah, I because I, you guys are putting out fun stuff. I enjoy watching it. I really do. I like it too, man. You can see, you can sense that excitement when they go to the go to the garage sales you could see that passion you know and they got some cool stuff yep and you know what i love about it dude is honestly sometimes i like because like ryan and pam they'll admit it like they're relatively new uh quote unquote pickers i guess we'll say mm -hmm. that's kind of old man way of saying it but they're you know pick like relatively new pickers but it's cool to kind of see the evolution of like where they were when they started and like you can already see their eye getting better and better trained every mm -hmm. time we go sourcing and it, it's really kind of cool to see that because i think we lose sight of how far we come as like sorcerers or pickers whatever you want to call it and it's kind of cool to see that evolution in real time with their videos yeah i they're smart pickers though man like yeah, they especially are. Like they're way ahead of where I was at that stage, you know. Oh, and how long have they been doing it full time? Oh, uh, they're, not, no, they're, they're part -time. not. Yeah. Oh, they're part time. Yeah, he's wow. he works uh family business like um cement plant or something, okay. concrete plant. I've watched them more. I've only seen like one or two of their videos. Yeah, and she's yeah. A, she's a dental hygienist. Yeah, but, but I mean, they, I tell you, man, they're putting out videos three, four, five times a week, dude, and doing like two live shows. So they're busting their ass like to to make youtube happen in the reselling business like because like i mean he works like he he'll message me like at five in the morning and he's headed to work 
and he don't get home. I don't think till like four or five at night. And then he's like, you know, editing video, listing crap, like doing a live show. Like they're busting their tail, dude. Good for them. Yeah. You know, ultimately, you know, ultimately though, what it comes down to is for me, when I watch, whether I watch somebody or not, like first question I ask is, do I like this person or do I like these people? And if the answer is no, I don't care what you know. I ain't watching you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I don't I care if I can learn. Everybody, I think uh, everybody on YouTube because they want to make it, people want to make make a connection. Yeah, I, I, and I like them. There's some well, people I like, and there's some people I don't like. John, people are asking about their channel. Are you cool if I link it in the chat real fast? Yeah, of course. I, just, I always like to ask permission. <laughs> There's a lot of content creators in the chat there. Tennessee Picker does it when he can. He's super busy. Um, yeah, he's a very busy guy. Yeah, I don't know how he does any of the stuff he does. Oh, look, Treasure Vintage Angie is here. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Angie. Wow, that's awesome. Hope it's a great day for you. Yeah, Angie has a channel too. Go go to, go to Treasure Vintage channel and sub and then tell her happy birthday. That'd be a good oh, Angie. She's cool. Angie does some cool live streams. Uh, yeah, she does. Like, the jewelry? Well, no, like not just jewelry, but like she'll go to like an antique store or whatever. And she is bold with her camera, the boldest I've seen. She'll just turn that phone on and she'll just be talking to the audience, walking around like the rest of the world ain't there. She don't care. It's, it works really well. But yeah, uh, look. Pittsburgh, there's all kind of content creators in here. Pittsburgh is in here. Who else? Thriftmine, Treasure Bay, Chad Juice. They hear Malik. Yep. Z. Love me some Z, man. And that, yeah, that's Chad Juice. I think Gate Chad City, Juice is in here. I think Gate City Picker has uploaded a few videos now, too. Yeah. I'm, I'm scrolling up to the chat, making sure I'm not missing anybody. Tell you what, man, YouTube is tough now, dude. They're so. There's so much, so much competition on YouTube. And I don't mean that in a bad sense, but there are just a lot of, all, you know, there's a lot of alternatives. It's hard. It's hard to start a channel now. Yeah, but if it's good, you'll eventually gain an audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bruce Wagel, for 5000 a month, Lonnie will like anyone. Well, hell yeah, I will. For five grand? Five grand? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Southern Nerd is still here. I thought we banned that guy last week. Hmm. No, nah, I'm, I'm just going to play it, dude. <laughs> but but we all know that guy is probably here. Not not you, Southern Nerd, but that guy. Y'all know who I'm talking about. That dude is probably still watching. You know, I wonder how many people get a, a wave of paranoia whenever we do this little this little gag. You know what I'm saying? How many people are like, oh, shit, are they talking about me? Yeah, well, most people are wrong when they think, are they talking about me? But there's that one guy. He knows. He knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he knows. That jerk. <laughs> All right, guys, I got a question for both of you. What's up? I think I know your answers, but I'm curious. So I got all this film equipment stuff uh, last weekend at this garage sale. I paid like 10 bucks, and I got lenses, cameras, all kinds of stuff. And I got this Olympus. It's an OM2N. Mm, this thing sells for like 150, 134. There's one that sold for 75, 100. It, it's a really good seller, but it's 35 millimeter. I mean, I, I don't have the slightest clue on how to test these things. I know the batteries are down here. So would you guys sell this as is? Or would you try to test it? How much is it worth? About a hundred bucks. I got to mute, guys. This might be the, the repair guy. Sorry. What, what do you think? What do you think you can get for you uh, as is? Probably fifty or sixty, I would think. Yeah, I don't know. And in the past, I've sold most of those cameras as is. But if you took the time to put a battery in it, um, I wouldn't think you would have to. I gotta get film, right? I, I, I mean, I when I used to when Crazy Picker Life used to be on YouTube, uh, they never, they didn't ever film test cameras. Now they would test the shutter 
at different speeds, you know, make sure that she, that's really what you're worried about. I think it's the shutter, you know, mm-hmm. but as far as, but they very rare. I don't think they ever film tested really. Yeah. Captain Bill's treasure says, open it up and check to see if the shutter is working. Um, all right. Stupid question. You kind of oh. need, you might need the batteries to do that on that model though. Yeah. Hmm. Tennessee Picker said, no, I've sold those all day long. The shutter cocks, it works. When he says cocks like this? I hope that's what Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't mean that. So when he, whenever you hit the, whenever you hit the actuate button, what happens? Nothing. Nothing. Really. Yeah. I mean, maybe so, I'm doing something wrong. I feel like this might be a good opportunity for an auction because I've got two, three lenses to go with it too. Test Alabama Thrifter says test shutter speed and light meter if it has one. Yeah, that's another thing Crazy Picker Life would do is that light meter. And I remember he would test it across, you know, the whole range of shutter speeds to make sure. Yeah, those guys know the cameras. They know cameras really. I know, but their freaking videos are down. They took them all down. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping they just sell them to private, and maybe one day they'll unprivate them. You know, and it sucks because like I like Wheeler. Like when I first started YouTube, man, Wheeler was a really big supporter of my channel. He was at the live shows a lot of times. Like, and I don't know what happened with them, man. Like I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen Wheeler at all. Like in in months. Like ever since that whole, th- ever since the videos went away. So, <laughs> oh, Kevin said Shutter Cox is my other YouTube channel. <laughs> All right, guys, we're doing an auction. Wish me luck. Good luck. Are you you're running? When are you starting it? I will schedule it to end, um, I guess, next Wednesday at night. Make it for a week. So, are you going to pay the 10 cents to schedule? Yeah, it's, it's worth it. I think. Yeah. Have Have you ever thought about using one of these services like Ink Frog or something? I have not. If I had an employee, I would say. So well, uh, and I, apparently eBay is going to be doing something where you can have employee accounts eventually. But you know, in the meantime, they don't. If I had, like employees, I I wouldn't want them having access to my entire account. I would probably use it, but I don't see a need to use it when I'm doing everything myself. Captain Bill's treasure says you need a. You need a battery, which is just a few bucks. Old photographer and sell a ton of them. John, go get you. I agree. Go get you a battery, dude. Do the battery? Yeah. I, not that I ever do, but I think you should. <laughs> go down here. Yeah. Is it like? Is it clean in there? Is it corroded? I haven't opened it up yet. Let me go get a flathead. Actually, you should be able to open that with a coin, huh? Mm, no, I don't think I have a coin handy. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. Bruce Bruce Weigel says, "Nice camera. The OM two N has has off the light, the film light metering. If you're taking a pic and the light changes, it will self adjust to compensate." <laughs> Mr. Sadie says they actually do light testing on cameras. They guarantee it, though. Yeah, and they know what they're looking at. <laughs> Yep, Denise's picks Wheeler Dealer and Banana Peeler. They're gonna come back someday. They they like YouTube too much, I think, not to come back eventually. Wheeler Dealer and Banana Peeler. Wheeler, yeah. Wheeler Dealer, Banana Peeler. <laughs> and then I like their little thing at the end with the car. This has been a uh, uh, what? What what do they say at the end with the little? They have the little race car. This has been a something something production. Uh, I can't remember. Uh oh, yeah, that's not the battery. I found some gears. Oh yeah, get out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem. I start tinkering with this stuff I know nothing about. And I'll break it. Some gears? Yeah, look at that here. Let's see if I can lock the screen on me. What's that? What's that's what's underneath that one? Oh, part? that's. You know what? I bet that's probably where you mount like a a, a, a film winder or something like that. Yeah, probably. Auto- yeah, Captain Bill's treasure saying that's for the auto winder. Yeah, that's like an attachment. So you don't have to uh want you know do the winding with the thumb. You take right. high speed photos. Probably run through a whole oh yeah, uniquely me. Wheeler dealer production. 
Yep. All right, thank you. Denise's picks line, are you still losing weight? Uh, I actually took about a week off or a little more than a week off, but I've been back on it this week. When's your, bet, when's, when's your bet thing end? Uh, July. So I got plenty of time. All right, Deep here we go. Mm-hmm. No corrosion, so that's a good sign. Okay, what kind of batteries does it take, do you know? Well, funky. CR1-3N. Let me see it. That's a weird one. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That's like a fat coin cell. Hmm. Yeah. I've actually got a store near me called Batteries Plus, and they just like they specialize in batteries. So the cheapest option would be to order one off of eBay and wait a couple of days, of course. Yeah, I'm not a patient person. No, I'm not either. Um uh, Somebody asked me about the Ducat, the Ducat that they were trying to return. Oh yeah, what happened with that? Nothing yet. I don't. I don't think they're going to return it though. I think I called their bluff and they backed down. Good. Because you know what? I might. I might even. I might even poke the bear. I might message them and say, "Hey, would you mind go ahead and getting that return sent back to me? I, I want to try and uh, resell it for more money." <laughs> what? What? Oh, the Ducat. Yeah. Yeah. Shadju says batteries plus will be expensive. It's usually around the four or five dollar mark. Anytime I've gotten those like watch batteries, it's not that bad. Justin, you feel like your mood is better since your room is clean? Yeah, probably. I'm also I think I'm still I'm probably pretty tired. I got the repair guy coming in the next like 15 minutes for the washer machine. Uh, that's gonna be fun. Hopefully it's just an like easy, easy fix and it won't like it's it's gonna cost 110 just for him to come to my door. So I'm hoping it doesn't cost too much more than that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's because you had to that's because you washed all his clothes that are behind you, dude. That's why. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll I'll tell you why, because I didn't no Gab okay. So I this is what I think happened. Gabby had a load of towels that she started washing on Friday. She ran them. She didn't want to take herself out of the dryer, so she just let him sit there. And then she's like, well, they need to get washed again because they're probably not great. So she washed them again on Saturday night. Then she left them in there again because she didn't want to take herself out of the dryer. <laughs> and then she washed them again last night and the thing seized up. So I don't know. I think, you know, it's like heavy towels at that point. They've been wet multiple times and you're just like letting these heavy things just sit in there and you're running them again. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think I think something that I think that might have had a role to do with it. Uh, Holly says she does it all the time. It wasn't that. I don't know. Maybe it's just a piece of shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, Captain Bill says he's done that four times. Washes my record before finally take. Oh, okay. I thought you meant taking out the machine. You just mean taking it out. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's just, it's acting screwy. Hopefully, it's something easy, an easy fix. We'll see. It probably is. Bargain shopping. I am the most unhandy person you could ever possibly know. If I were to try to fix my washing machine, like I think my house would end up like in an ash pile. <laughs> you know, it'd be fun is if you, if you bought some Ikea furniture, Justin, and then did like a live stream of you trying to put it together. That'd be fun. I, I'm at, actually, believe it or not, Lonnie, I'm pretty okay at putting that kind of stuff together. If it hasn't, inst- like if it has decent instructions, I can figure it out, but okay. it does not have decent instructions. When it comes, I'm talking about when it comes to like like re- like repair finesse, like things that require a little bit of finesse. You know what I mean? I'm not the guy, man. I, like if you need me to take a sledgehammer or something, sure. But uh, anything that requires any sort of finesse, I'm not that guy. Like the stuff you do over on your other channel, Lonnie, I could not. The Garage Geek or whatever, I can. That stuff would drive me insane. That's with all those little like uh, Arduino, Arduino, whatever it's called, <laughs> Ardu- Arduino. What is it? Arduino, Ardu- Ardu. I don't know. I can't pronounce Arduino, it. It's Ardu- Arduino. Yeah, hooking up all those different things to it and whatnot. I, that would go crazy. I'll go crazy. Dude, I've got all my stuff packed. Nice. Wait, I, wait that. How many did you have going out today, Lonnie? I, I had 10. Yesterday was a pretty solid Tuesday. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. It was not a good day. Yeah, Tuesday. I, I think yesterday I was like right at 360, 370 gross. It wasn't a bad day at all for me yesterday, which is cool because I always worry the days I'm not listing that I'm going to have crap sales days, you know? Yeah, I have that same worry. Dawn, Dawn was off track the last few weeks. No gain, no loss. Started back Monday. Yeah. You know what? That's going to happen, Dawn. It's okay. We can do yeah, it. We're not going to lose every week. Well, I had no chance of losing the past week and a half because I was being bad, you know? But I'm good now. You know what I've been, you know what I've been snacking on that helps a bunch? These things. And a lot of y'all are probably going to be grossed out. You know what that is? Fried pork skins. Yep, pork skins. I mean, they they're very filling. They help. They have all kind of different flavors. These boxes are like five bucks. They're fifty cents a pack, and they have like red hot spicy buffalo. I need to go buy some more. I love these things. Look, these like barbecue. The only thing, if you if you haven't had these before, you're gonna try them. Make sure you drink something, because um, make sure you have like a big you know thing of water or something. The other day, this was like I don't know last weekend. I had I ate two bags of these damn things, and I didn't have anything to drink, and I almost died. Like I'm not joking either. I almost died because they got in like in my throat. And they weren't going all the way down because I wasn't washing them down. And when they get in there, they like swell up. And they got, I could feel them like down in the bottom of my throat swelling up. And I was like, and it was getting worse and worse. Yeah, and I had to run. Yeah, Lord. I had to run to the house and I, I just turned the faucet on. <laughs> you know, and dude, I think I could have died. I think if you died from that, man, like we would have to roast you in the epitaph. <laughs> I know. Could you imagine, dude, like slumped over the desk right here with a couple of empty bags of uh, pork skins <laughs> and I'm laying there dead with like a pork skin like in my hand or something. Lonnie, Liquidation Pros ask, is that is your healthy snack? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my snack that keeps me from eating crap. Man chokes to death on pork skins in chat. <laughs> Zahir says, wow, great ad for pork skins. <laughs> Dude, they are dangerous. Like, I've never ate anything that, like, and it happened again, too. It happened it happened twice where I started feeling like I was about to choke, and I was like, shit. That's one way to lose weight, though. You eat these, yeah, you, you, you die, and then you'll <laughs> lose weight. Oh, man. Well... I think the repair guy is at the door, so I had to I had to bounce out of here, fellas. But it's been fun. Thanks for hanging out, dude. I think uh, we're pretty much done for today, aren't we? Firefighting reseller, Lonnie, <laughs> your power strip in the back really has me concerned. What power strip? I don't even see it. They might be talking about this thing right here. That looks fine to me. <laughs> looks good to me. I, mean, I don't know shit about electricity or electric. I, I, like they don't like look. See that it looks like this uh, <laughs> Christmas vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple of setups like that. You just can't see. Them. Uh. Uh. Ooh. Tennessee Picker says you can moisten them up by dipping them in ranch dressing. That's a good idea. <laughs> that adds to the health. Uniquely me wants me to eat a bag real fast right now. She's trying to get me to kill myself. I don't I just finished my coffee. I'm gonna get some water later. We can do a little private chat if you want. I'll eat a couple of bags of these on video. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, hey me. Lonnie, how many tokens do that monster? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, mm. do it for the tubes. No, that, that's your that's y'all's game there, Thrift Mine. <laughs> oh, don't miss Friday night Thrift Mine channel bathtub hangout party with them. They're gonna be yeah. from a bathtub. Hell yeah! 
Oh, were you trying to end the show? Because I got work to do anyway. Yeah. I'm trying, but y'all keep going on about these stupid pork rinds. <laughs> Dude, I'm just reading. I love the ch I love the people in the chat. I love them all. Yeah, oh. bargain shopping, private mukbang with Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man! I, Candace, I, Candace, if you're watching this later, somehow there's no way you will if you ever do. Um, not Candace Six. I'm talking about wife Candace, and I'm just joking. I promise you. <laughs> ain't, nothing wrong, ain't nothing wrong with eating uh, pork rinds privately on a on a webcam, dude. There's something very wrong with that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why, but hey, there's something really messed up about that. Oh lord! All right, guys. Uh, could and you imagine paying somebody, <laughs> send it like PayPal and somebody some money so you can watch them eat pork rinds? <laughs> Funny. If that takes off, man, there's your there's your new idea, man. Just get on one of those sites, they accept tokens, and you just get tokens and eat pork rinds. She's just hoping I die. That's what it is. <laughs> she have her camera out recording it, so then she can have a viral video. Yeah. <laughs> Watch reseller die in shed. Mm. Uh, tidy whiteys. This has been fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Um, Thank you for hanging out. I can't. I can't join. I'm gonna be out yard sailing and having fun. So, Justin's gonna be on your channel tomorrow. I'm assuming. I think we're at Lonnie's tomorrow. Cause I normally it would have been on mine today, but I, I was I asked you yesterday. Now, so we'll be on. We're we're doing we're do, I'm doing one a week now. You're doing two. John's doing one. Oh uh, whatever. I, I wherever we're at, come and hang out with us. <laughs> we're, we're we're gonna be on your channel tomorrow, Justin. All right, all right. Oregon Chop, and thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. That's very very nice. She says, yeah. "Eat pork rinds." <laughs> mm. Guys, thanks for hanging out and watching. Um, Catch Lonnie and Justin tomorrow on Justin's channel. Good luck, John Yard Sale. And take hey, some video. I'm, I'm liking that you're doing more videos now. Yeah, it's fun. All right, guys. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye.